Welcome to the Bold Analysis, ladies and gentlemen. I want to do a critical analysis about a political development that is not new to you um, since yesterday. And this is the man Kalonzo Musioka. But before we look at the details of this podcast uh, on that end, allow me to start with the urgent appeal I was doing yesterday. This boy here is a nine-year-old boy that had brain tumor and that one at age three. So he's been on and off the hospital, was hospitalized at one point and had been discharged. But after uh, that medication, there's some drugs that were prescribed for him that he takes, that that baby takes daily. So for the last four days, he's not been able to take those drugs because of financial challenges. As the bold, I requested, uh, the mother requested me, and I'm also asking you on behalf of the mother, that we did a bit, bit of support towards those drugs. I've just got, uh, I didn't want to do a long fundraiser, so we've requested for only 30,000. As of last night fundraiser that I did, yes, we had around, Mm, what what yes we have 11,200 so I'm only looking for out of 30,000 I only have 11 I'm only looking for 19,000 today this um, today so I'm going to help I'm going to send what I have but at least if we get by evening we'll be very grateful so let's help at least Wom Toto Apate his Odawa and the number I've pinned there thank you very much for it now fast forward there is a political rope that hangs in the neck of Stephen Kalonzo Musioka, the wiper leader, <clears throat> the wiper leader. And that political rope is what is called indecisiveness, where he's been touted as a politician that he's indecisive. For uh, to, through the 2022 general election and throughout and even after that election, he has proved loyalty, uh, he has proved some loyalty and shedding off that tag because despite of the push and um, request or the lobby from William Ruto's side, he did not cross over. I'm talking this because I knew that William Ruto really wanted um, Kalonzo Musioka. Yesterday, not yesterday, the day before yesterday, Kalonzo Musioka attended a dinner in State House. Uh, that dinner was organized by the uh, William Ruto organization, William Ruto, uh, um, the State House team to host the visiting presidents, their spouses, and other delegates that were part of the presidential team. So, um, that this photo was released. Kalonzo uh, sharing meeting, or rather expressing in, in that photo with Murkomen, Muturi, and I think the other gentleman uh, I still don't know. So, there's something I want to say that in that uh, in that in that in that dinner, um, it was actually attended by the presidents of different countries, and even William Ruto and the other leaders. The other observation I need to make here is, um, Kalonzo Musioka photo in State House was also posted by the State House team, and uh, the State House team picked. One photo, I need to get that photo for you, this one here, where Kalonzo Musioka attended and so they shared. Why am I taking a lot of cognizance in that? I'm taking a lot of cognizance on status sharing Kalonzo's photo because the, just the same day when Raila attended the summit, uh, stormed, that is the word, stormed the summit, uh, the climate summit, only Musalem Davadi's Facebook uh, page, uh, uh, social media team, shared the image of Raila Odinga. But the State House team shared all the photos, but you will not find the photo of Raila Odinga attending Climate Summit in the social media pages of William Ruto. Now, someone might ask, Kevin, why that is important, or what is, why are you touching significance to that? I'm touching a lot of significance to that because that is an indicator on really uh, who invited who or who was needed where. I will explain that in respect to Raila storming there first. So what happened? There have been questions of 
on what capacity did Kalonzo Musioka attend the summit? So I want to explain or attend that bouquet. I want to explain for you. The status bouquet is not the, that is not the first one. They've always been organized. And what happened yesterday here is the State House team sent invites to the cabinet members and some other senior people in government. That uh, bouquet was not just attended by the cabinet and even some heads, some heads of parastatals were invited in State House and Kalonzo Musioka received formal invitation to attend that bouquet. Remember, in State House is not a place you can storm. This is happening. You compare that to Ray Lodinga's entry in KCC, it's very clear that, yes, William Ruto might have invited personally Ray Lodinga to attend, but Raila decided to do it his way. And he went there in what Swahili people will say, Kimangoto. He, as he wanted, he went there as he wanted and sat where he wanted. Went through the presidential, the route was expected to be used by the president. But even though I, I'm wondering about that president thing, because even um, Salem Davadi used the same place and stormed, went and even got a seat, the front seat which I do believe, even though he arrived before every other person, but Tyler went, stormed there. There is one probability that William Bruto invited him, but he decided to go, or he did not receive invitation, because uh, the ODM wing actually explained, head of communications explained, that the government denied Raila Odinga accreditation, something I totally don't think it's true. I just think that Raila may not, may not even have applied, because if Raila would have applied, and that part they have declined, that would have been shown by the bloggers to show that they have, they have rejected Raila. You would have seen it or to show that Raila wants to attend the summit. Someone would have done that because we know the government team have appetite for propaganda. So if you compare the two, it's very clear that um, uh, uh, Kalonzo Musioka was invited in State House. There is absolutely no problem with Kalonzo Musioka attending that because he's invited. However, things don't just happen because two days ago, Kalonzo Musioka was in Ukambani proving the way and saying the way uh, or giving Ruto strong legitimacy while speaking in Ukambani. And I remember Martha Karo had to say, went and said it's untrue. Later he will create a spin that he was saying William Bruto is now legitimate, or rather he recognizes the leadership of William Bruto because of William Bruto's goodwill in the talks. So, Kalonzo Musioka clearly indicates, uh, shows one thing, that uh, maybe he was invited because of that statement that he made there. But what I want to explain is here, that um, there are there is something about Kalonzo that he needs to address. And this is the challenge with Stephen Kalonzo Musioka. Um, Kalonzo must understand and seem not to see who is his competitor. And let me put it in a question. Is William Ruto Kalonzo's competitor? Why am I using the word competitor? Because Kalonzo wants to be the president, wants to vie for presidency in 2022. That's something in the public domain. And his competitor is William Ruto. But the way he endears himself to William Ruto and the brand of politics that is playing around William Ruto is one that cannot even make him be a competitor. And there is a clear sign that I don't think William Ruto is his competitor. Why am I saying? When he went to State House, there is no single photo of him with William Ruto. When Raila was in the Calumet Summit, there are two photos that came. One, a photo with Rigadi Gashagwa. The other one, a photo with Musalem Davadi. Yes. So he went there and was somewhere in the periphery, understanding very well that he was badly humiliated in State House. Total humiliation. You cannot go there to project yourself. And he just needed to package. He is not that.
that smart because he needs to do political packaging. Your competitor is not Rilo Dinga. If someone was playing catch-up games because Rilo stormed KICC, even though he was not invited, and so you also wanted that visibility, and that's why you asked to shoot it out, then you realize that Rilo is not Kalonzo's competitor. Kalonzo must understand that his competitor is William Ruto. Number two, um, Kalonzo is a member representing Azimila Umoja in bipartisan talks. And those talks are supposed to get ceasefire between the two sides. When he went there, and uh, in the talks, he's the most high-profile leader there on the Azimila side. And even, in fact, of all those participants, Kalonzo is the most senior and most high-profile with high profile. Then he's speaking with their Kimani Chungwa. Then he went to State House and also speaks with Muturi and um, former Speaker Muturi and uh, Murkomen, who are Cabinet Secretaries. So that tells you that even William Ruto, they, did, they do not want to improve his caliber. They want to, there is no way that gives him political bunker points. What am I saying? That Kalonzo Musioka, maybe, is not going to play anti-Ruto politics after bipartisan talks. The two outcomes from bipartisan talks. One is some inclusivity where maybe some members of opposition, because there is also a question of imbalance in those talks, some members of the opposition might be integrated in government and there would also be probably creation of the leader of opposition office. So, I am seeing a probability from the signal that is sending that Kalonzo might be integrated in Kenya Kwanzaa. I may be wrong on this, but I can tell you, if you look at the whole Azimio team, the only person that William Ruto wants now is none other than Kalonzo Musioka. Because when you get Kalonzo Musioka out of Azimio La Umoja, then... There is even no need to consider, to start asking yourself whether you should campaign or not. If you get Kalonzo Musioka, 2027 is done deal. The difference between Raya Odinga and William Ruto, according to last general election uh, results that were announced by Chibukati, was a difference of 200,000 votes. If you get Kalonzo Musioka away from Raila, I I'm telling you that there's no politics there. So there is a, a likelihood that if Kalonzo will not get that lead of opposition, uh, maybe on the other side, he might actually change the tactic and join William Samoy Ruto. Number three. Um, if Kalonzo is not careful, he will actually weaken the Wiper Party. Even if he doesn't cross, because himself, he cannot make such a deliberate, such a big blunder, and how about the next day, if the MPs then go there and defy you? It is something that has to be understood. I will explain that within the context of Raila Odinga. And so, um, there is a very clear line, a very clear signal that Kalonzo Musioka is not ready to counter William Ruto in 2027. He's not. He's not ready. As of now, if there is, if there is someone who, and, and, and is not ready because he seems not to have a roadmap. He seems not to have a strategy. William Ruto is very combative. William Ruto is very aggressive on rallies. And William Ruto is everywhere. So if you want to counter him, you must get a strategy. You know, you must get a strategy. You cannot be, you cannot play a diplomatic card with such a combative person. And I will be saying, if there is someone that should actually be countering William Ruto's narratives as we speak, between now and 2027, that person should be William Ruto's competitor. Who, according to me, as things stand in Azumi Lomoja, that person should be Kalonzo Musioka. But the way he's blowing hot and cold, the political indecisiveness uh, that tag that he seems he's supposed to shed might not see the end of the day. The reason why this is very suspicious is this. 
A day after he went to State House, which I want to believe himself, Kalonzo was invited. Kalonzo did not storm State House the way Rand Odinga stormed. The way he went to State House and was invited and attended it there, he's been talking about legitimacy questions, legitimacy, giving William Bruto legitimacy. But a day after that, Rail Odinga ejected members of ODM party who associated with William Ruto against uh, the party position. So what is it saying? There is a very clear line that Raila is sending a message that me, I am not going to be part of William Ruto's government. That's what Raila is sending. That's the message Raila is sending. But it seems Kalonzo Musioka is not reading his stand. Kindly. I don't, want you to con I don't want you to confuse that I have a blame with it. But I seem not to see that some move may not be sensitive to his political future. That's my take. I think Raila Odinga has nothing to rule, lose. Raila has an option of not vying or vying. Can also have an option of vying or vying. Raila can either vie and do not vie, which most of us have always been asking him not to vie and support Kalonzo Musioka. And that is why I think um, the Azimio leader, if the, amongst the Azimio leaders, the two leaders that attended was Kalonzo and Raila. Raila went to the summit. And what, what does it add? Someone will ask me, Kalonzo, Raila has been meeting Kalonzo. Raila, Raila has been meeting Ruto. Like, Raila met Ruto in events, in some burial. There was also the Mbasa meeting, which was in terms of a crisis. But on this one, if Kalonzo was to attend that uh, dinner, he was supposed to meet William Ruto in person. But the way he's humiliated there shows something different. Thank you.